that your neighbor and say, Welcome to church. Welcome to church. If that neighbor is not smiling for another person, I say, Welcome to church. Welcome to church. That's why you don't fight your neighbor because you need that neighbor to help you in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I want to say thank you, like a special thank you to our Father in the Lord. I don't know what the is saying, but I want to say this with me. 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 Not for yourself. I ain't just happy to say it. The Lord has brought us together again to His presence today. Amen. And it's my prayer that for everyone that has appeared in Zion tonight, that strength upon strength the Lord will give unto us in Jesus. Amen. Grace upon grace the Lord will give unto us in Jesus. Amen. Wisdom upon wisdom the Lord will give unto us in Jesus. Amen. As you already know that we are people of God in this house. I will not be saying anything that my father, the Lord, has been to So just be a part of what happened again. The basically I want in the need for clothing, the need for love, the need for shelter, the need for assurance, the need for a lot of things. Needs, wants, goals, aspirations, desires, purposes, a lot of things that we want to achieve. And in the course of us wanting to achieve this thing, we move from pillar to post, trying to extend our strength. And everybody, no one on this earth, Will tell me that they don't have something that they need. We always want something that we need. Everyone try with every effort that they have to ensure that these needs are met. But the problem comes when you've expended all your strength and there is no result. And then the natural response is that you are weak as you are doing. The natural imagine that after you made every effort to go to the market, with I Price in stock after you bargain with the meat seller for like five hours, like two hours, two thousand, one thousand. You move five hundred, don't move five hundred. On your way, the car broke down, you push it, you shall go home. And then you go to the kitchen, you now try to put on your gas. And the gas is saying, Wow, welcome. That's finished. Wow. The first response you're at is that you first sit down. I'd be like, Okay, we are every man. At the point when our effort is not yielding the result that I want it to yield. Our art was very as a man. You would actually think that it happens to just one person. Mm -mm. It happens to everybody. In fact, the Bible does not eat the fact that at a point in the life of Christian, you will be in need of strength. It does not eat us away from the Father. At a point in our life, our strength will not be able to carry us further. We will need something that we call divine help. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, 30 to 31. You would have think that as a youth or people that should get weary faster are the older people. <laughs> Bible shock does Isaiah 40. We are very quick to read that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Let's read the verse before that verse so that we will know. Bible says that even the youth faint and they become weary. But they that wait upon the Lord. So it baffles me that at our, in our journey in life, Everybody wanted to achieve something. Everybody wanted to, to, to show the world what you are made of. By strength. The Bible says that by strength shall no more prevail. Mm. And at a point, Zechariah 4, 6 says, it's not by might. It's not by power. So therefore, it's just by one thing. By the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hmm. So there are things that power can actually achieve. There are things that might can actually achieve. But at a point, it will no longer be by power. At a point, it will no longer be by your might. At that point, it will be just by one thing. The spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. God has never designed any man to function on his own. He will never design a man that cannot never function without him. You no know, doctor says something that apple is useful in your hand. But when it gets to the end of the manufacturer, it will work, it will work better. The manufacturer will never design a product that will never be in need. Like, every time you are to update something on your phone, it's just to remind you that there is a system controlling that thing. 
just to remind you that there is a need for you to come back to refresh. I wonder why Bishop that packed this month, our month of oil and refreshing. Because it will get to a point as a man, it will get to a point as a woman that you will need a lot to refresh you. It will get to a point as a student that you will know that by head knowledge you cannot pass this exam. You will need the refreshing of the Lord. She, you will read the book of fasting. Hallelujah. Like I was saying, God has never ever, and we never design a man to function outside. Of course, the earth or the heaven of uh, the earth as the Lord given to men and the heaven of heaven to him. The Bible says that. Let me just call her face. But even at that, at every point in time, man will need God. Man will need God. God might not decide, decide to, you know, just jump into our fears. But at a point in time in life, you will know that you need God. That is for the world. Now let's come to the system, the believers. Group. As a believer, every day we need God. Every movement we need God. But it gets to a point also as a believer, we feel we have strength enough to carry on. And then we go in our own strength. And when our strength is not enough, it's just like a little baby thinking that it can beat their opponent. They saw their mother, they will not ask for it. They will not go to go and beat that one. By the time that one slap you, and you cry, you will not run back to the mother. I'd be like, Mom, I'm here. Mom, you, your mom now asked me, now what do you want me to do? Maybe you were going before. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'll be talking on what I call the believer's advantage. Hallelujah. The believer's advantage. Praise God. Hallelujah. One of the topics that one of God's thoughts that I love the most is Tiger Notes. I wonder why I decided to tell us that we should stagger not. It's because in this life, a lot of things will shift your strength. A lot of things will shift your standing. At the point you even ask yourself, am I really standing? Do you know how many times fear not actually appear in the Bible? Can someone guess how many times fear not appears in the Bible? It's a very common quiz in Bible. You do not to attend Bible quiz. <laughs> Every day there is a fear not in the Bible. Enough for the entire year. Because at every day, every time, something must to shift your faith. Something will just challenge your faith. Something will make you to want to stagger. You have to remind yourself, I stagger out. Hallelujah. Even the strongest of men at the point needs help. The Bible recorded that the Lord Jesus Christ at the point needs both the help of the spirit and that of men. Yeah. If God in flesh could need help of the spirit and men, I don't know why you think that your own strength will take you further. Hence, for God to take us out of this, you know, he will never leave us without a solution. That is it. So God provides a believer a system of advantage in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Like I said, he provides a subscription plan for help. You know how you subscribe monthly? Monthly, uh, you subscribe to renew your strength, renew your spirit, you renew your soul, you renew everything, and that he gave us as his children. The help of God is actually to provide ease, speed, and clarity to the affairs of men. Act chapter 26, verse 22. Act 26, verse 22. Bible says, Having therefore the help of God, obtain the help of God. I continue until this day. I've been there for obtaining the help of God. I continue until this day. That means it is only the strength and the help of God that can make us continue. It is only the help. You can go, but you cannot last long on your own strength. Of course, you will do something. Just that your impact will not be long lasting. Of course, you will get to a place. Just that you might, you might not get to the end. Of course, you will start well, but you might not finish well. So God provides help for everybody at every point in time. The first thing that I want us to know tonight is that God's help is available for all. God's help is available for all. The Bible says that, but for whatsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whatsoever is whatsoever. Whatsoever is whatsoever. Dark is whatsoever. Talk is whatsoever. Short is whatsoever. A Nigerian, whatsoever. 
a British whatsoever. When the Bible says whatsoever, then whosoever that shall call the first name of the Lord. I want us to quickly dive into the scripture and read the story. A not so common story, but a very rich one. Genesis chapter 16. It's a story of the ant maiden of Sarah. Most of us might not even know her name. Some of us might not. Because it's not so common a story. We tend to overlook some story and pick the one. If I say Esther now, everybody can. Some people will even start reading Esther from their head. It is where it was. Amen. Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1. I will read. Now, Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. And he, she had an aunt with. So before I read, let me quickly give us the background of this of this um, story. You know, Bishop, oh, I said Bishop. Ah. You know, Jesus promised both uh, Sarah and Abraham a son. Like he, he gave them promises that they are going to have a son, and the son will continue there. And he gave them a lot of things. And year upon year, this promise seems as if it's not going to come to pass. So Sarah wanted to help God process it by herself. She has expanded her strength. She decided to devise another means to bring forth a child. And she looked at her maiden and be like, ah, this girl should be able to bear children for it, uh, like children for my husband. Of course, the, the, the our intention in this Bible verse is that whatsoever child that that lady gave birth to would be hers. So and she, she wanted to use the girl for surrogacy in plain English. So let's continue. So Bible says, whose name was Agai? And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, just like Adam. And Sarah's Abraham's wife took Agai and made the Egyptian from after Abraham dealt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband to be his wife. And he went in unto Agar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she has conceived, her mistress was despised in her hand, in her eyes. Maybe we should read from the um, perspective of Agar. Agar was just, out, uh, you remember that Abraham and his, and his wife went to, when they went to Egypt, the a king wanted to take Sarah as wife. And then they had to lie that Sarah is, Abraham's younger sister, and the king gave them a lot of things, including maid, both the male maid and the female maid. So most likely, a guy might be, might be part of this maid that came with them from, a guy, from Egypt. So now she's there. The Bible does not tell us where the mistress call her and say, a guy, you will sleep with my husband. Nobody actually asks for her opinion. Then, whatever your master says is what you do as a maid. So... The Bible just made us know that the, 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 this probably she had her own plan. Probably she even had someone that she's in love with. I mean, who wants to sleep with the 90 year old man? Abraham at that time, <laughs> you said, imagine, John picture, 90 year old. I'm sure Edgar was a very young lady. So her plan was cancelled, her strength lived. Bible says that she, uh, Abraham sleep, slept with her and then she conceived. And at that point, she began to despise her mistress. Probably out of whatever it is that she's passing through. She began to despise Sarah. Sarah saw this and decided to complain to Abraham. I want to read fast so that because of our time. And Abraham told Sarah that this is your hand made though. Whatever it is that you want to do to her, please do to her. Bible recorded that Sarah dealt with her so much that a pregnant woman decided to run away from the house. So much. So a journey her bitterness just started, like a suffering I started. Now, Sarah said, I can no longer this, take this again. She packed her bag, and even if she didn't have a bag, and run. she was on her way back to Egypt. And then she got to a well at Shop. And where she is, where she was at that point in time, when there was no longer hope, and she does not even know where she's going. For her to be a maid, that means she doesn't have any relatives she wants to go and meet where she's going to. She does not even know anything. So she was there at that well. Bible says that the angel of the Lord found her. I don't know your situation that you think that you are tonight. I want you to know that God's help is able to find you where you are. Bible says that the angel of the Lord found her, and that angel asked her and said, "A guy, Sarah Smith, where comes and comes that off? And where are you going?" Shape God is also saying, "You know what's happening. You know where it's going. Why will you ask me where comes that? Where are you going?" That one even said, "See, 
And the angel of the Lord said to her, okay, and he said, I flee from the face of my mistress. Right? And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to that mistress. Ah. And submit yourself on that hand. The first response I was doing my is, excuse me, sir, are you blind? Because you should know that this woman is maltreating me. The response for me is to run. But God said she should return. In turn, he gave her a promise. And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and it shall not be it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Thou art with a child and shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath had the affliction. And it will be a white man, and God began to give him a lot of promises. And verse 13, she said, And she came and she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. The Lord seeth me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? God does not care about the condition that you are. He can find you every, at every point in time. He only needs you to assess and accept his I told you that the help of God is continually available because he knows that at a point in time, we will always need his help. At a point in time, we will always want to come and draw again a form of strength. And she went and God gave her promises. You would think that the story will end well, she? She went there. Jump to that Bible verse and come to chapter 21 with me. Now, this is 14 or 16 years after this woman has given birth. Do you think that the suffering that she sta- that, that started must have, will have ended at that time? No, she's still a maid. Nothing changed. She's still a servant. The only difference is that she's a servant that gave birth to a son for the master. That's all. Now 21. At this point in time, the Lord has seen his promise in the life of Sarai, and Sarai has given birth to a child of her own. And the Bible says, and the Lord, verse 21, chapter 21, says, if you have a Bible, read with me so that I can get a clear picture of what I'm saying. And the Lord visited Sarai, and he said, and he said, and the Lord said unto Sarah as he had spoken. He visited Sarah as he had said and said and did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a child in his old age. And at the set time with the Lord has spoken. Let's move to let's jump to verse 8 because of time. Bible says that and the child grew and winged. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was winged. And Sarah saw that the son of Agai the Egyptian, which he had born unto. Abraham mock, was mocking. Was mocking. Probably the guy was just saying, I'm the first child. You know, this, this is just a small child. Probably being mischievous in, in his dealing, you know how children are. Now, because Sarah is already feeling insecure with whatever it is that she had, she, she called her husband and said, I can no longer stand this. You need to send this woman a son away. Blah, 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 blah. And Abraham was displeased. Guess what the Lord did? She means it was the Lord that sent her to... Don't forget that it was the Lord that said she should go back. God now told Abraham again that Abraham should tell the wife to send her out. Same God. You sent her back. Now, God told Abraham, this what the wife wants, what that your wife wants is what you will do. Tell her to send her out. Abraham too. Pa, pa, pa. Gave them food and water. Send them back in. And the Bible says that at the point, the supply that they have, the dream that someone is carrying, the ambition that someone is carrying, with the strength of herself, as she was going, the supply ended. As she was going, the water, the bread, the dream, the aspiration looks as if it's no longer going to come to place. And it ended. And this woman saw the child that was. That, 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 that was full of life, life, full of life enough to be mocking another person's child, lifeless. And she looked at this child, and she could not bear to see this child die in her hand. And then she abandoned the child under a tree. And she stand, she died. The, the Bible said that she, she stood and a bow threw away from that child. So she put a child at the distance, tried to sit down at the distance too. And just where she is, Bible says that God, she, let's, let's read verse 16. And the Bible says that, and when the water was spent, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, and when she went and sat down by the child, and goes off, a, which was a bow shot, for she said, Let me not see the death of this child. And she sat over against him and lifted 
up our voice and wept. Bible says in verse 17, and the Lord heard the voice of the lad. I pray that the Lord will hear someone's voice for every yeah. night. And the angel of the Lord called to a guy out of heaven. Oh. Oh. Same God. Out of heaven and said, that's the question that God asked her. What a left now? Ah, ah. Sir. Okay, sorry. Let's even say that last time. She, you asked me, I was pregnant. She, now you are saying that I have a child that's about to die. You are still asking me, why am I crying? Isn't know what to cry about? And the Bible says, that dream that you have, that it looks as though it's going to, it's not going to be achieved. That marriage that feels as though it's not going to be fulfilled. That desire that seems as if God is not hearing, that you are crying over, fear not. Bible says, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. So, your dream has a voice. Your ambition has a voice. Your aspiration has a voice. Enough to wish God for help. He said, arise and leave the Lord and hold him in thy hand, and I will make him a great nation. And Bible says that the Lord opened her eyes to see. In the midst of your problem, there is solution. It's just that most of the time, the problems are so overwhelming that we are not so sure if what we are seeing is the solution or not. It's just that most of the time, there is so much cloud, too much cloud actually in the face of our judgment that we are not so certain if what God is actually saying to us is the right thing. It's just that so much of the time, we've spent so much strength trying to achieve things on our own that when God introduces his help, it seems as though he's fake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number two thing that you need to learn today is that every mortal man has their limits. Only God is unlimited. Every mortal man. As long as you are a man, there is a limit to what you can do. As long as that person that promises you help is a man, there is a limit to what, how they can help you. I've been on seen plenty of people that will cry as they bury and say, I will be like a father for you. I will be like a mother for you. And at the slightest show of report cards, we have gone. The Bible says, Psalm 60, verse 11, that vain is the help of a man. Send us help, Lord. For vain is the help of a man. The third thing that you should learn tonight is that when God helps a man, it does not take away your responsibility as a man. You will think that God's help is automatic and you don't have to do anything. You lie. God will not give you. In fact, this house, Bishop has taught us a lot of things. That a Christianity that takes away your responsibility is an irresponsible Christianity. God's help will not take the place of your responsibility. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bible says that may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the partnership, the communion of the Holy Spirit. God knows that at a point in life, we will need partnership. At a point in life, your strength will have been expanded that you need something greater than your own strength to sustain you more. And it introduces somebody, the Holy Spirit. So when I say this believer's advantage, where I am actually going tonight is the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Last week, we had a very brilliant conversation of the Holy Spirit from our minister, Tashile. Hallelujah. So trust me, I'm not here to take you back. I'm just here to actually tell you how God uses the Spirit to supply strength to your soul. Just like prayer, most of us, we like the outcome, but not the process. You like what prayer can do, but you don't like to pray. You like what the spirit, you, you like it when people say, and the spirit of the Lord told me that I should not go. And I did not go. And the car passed. I'm like, eh? She, it, it's supposed to ginger you to say, okay, where's the spirit? No, you just like the outcome. But the process, mm-mm. most of us like jello fries. But when it's time for us to cook, praise God. <laughs> I didn't mention anybody's name. Often we source for help from all other means, but from God. Men, we rather prefer to run it as keta than ask God for help. Is it that we often forget that God is able to 
enough, like God is enough for us to help us. You would rather ask every other person but the Holy Spirit for help. Most of the time, it's the last option that comes to our mind. When you feel like every other thing is then that you remember, oh, there is a spirit that helps men. And Bible says that God sent this spirit to help in our infirmity. Holy Spirit is so important that Jesus, your Jesus, will not start his ministry on his appearance. You will think that because he is Jesus, as he has landed, he should start working. Now, you know, as he's like, ah. That she starts working. But no, he had to wait. Because as long as he's in flesh, there is a limit to what he can do. As long as he's residing in this mortal body, there is a limit that he can do, even though he's the incarnate son of God. So there is a need for supply of strength. And God introduces the spirit to him. Amen. Bible says that our God anointed who? Jesus. With what? The Holy Ghost and, the, and with power. Let me tell you one of the spiritual meaning of frustration. is a man that tries to do God's work without God's spirit. Frustration. Spiritual frustration. Is you trying to do one of the meaning? Is you trying to do God's work without God's spirit? Show me a man that wants to achieve a lot spiritually without the spirit of God. And I will show you a man that will be so frustrated that at the end of the day, his name will be spelled with frustration. Show me a man that feels that this place of the secret place, that feels that the, 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 the intention of God having been, to, to have actually brought about the Holy Spirit is feeble. And I will show you a man that will not have, have a lasting impact in life. Show me a man, a Christian man, a Christian woman, that think their strength is enough to take them to a far place. And I will show you a man, without the help of God, and I will show you a man that might not actually pass the gates. Doesn't talk of far place. He might not even get to bust up. Hallelujah. Amen. The person of the Holy Spirit. Bishop always say in this house, and Mimi more laughing, she share. Some of us it sound like an anthem. You will know when they ask you to pray for one hour and for 10 minutes, first 10 minutes, look like 30 hours. <laughs> and then you will know that you need more than your strength to pray. They ask you to, oh God, they ask you to come and give this charge. And some of us are responsible can this cup pass over me. No, this cup you will drink from it. It's not going anywhere. You will drink from it. Hallelujah. Show, but show me a man that is weak, but understand the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I will show you a man that has the strength of the world. Mm. The Bible says that it is by the Spirit that will leap over a world. The Bible says that let the weak says I am strong. You would have actually thought that in context, they are not weak. They are weak. But they knew that the application of the Spirit, they are strong. You try and say you are strong when you don't have the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's not because of the frailty of that bone, but it's because there is a spirit that God Lord has placed in man to help in our infirmity. Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 to 27. Bible says that for the spirit also helps our infirmity in that we know not what to pray for, but there is a spirit that helps us with groaning, unuttered groaning. Let me quickly give us, I give us one story because let, now that's the Old Testament. Now let's come to the New Testament. Peter, our apostle Peter. Peter had, you know, but Peter and every other disciple followed Jesus three and a half years. We would have thought that as they followed Jesus, they're following him every day, every day, every year, that should be, when he died, they would be there standing. Every single time that they followed, they followed him for the past three years, they were doing it to their head. Such that when at the slightest opportunity that Jesus died, it seems as if there's no more hope for them. They did not waste time for Peter to say, Wait, I'm previously a fisherman. I have family. I have wife. Right now, I'm going back to fishing. Do you make to raise that voice that is going back to fishing? Almost every, all, his, all his colleagues said, We will go with you. And then they went to the fish pond to go and fish. Don't forget that. Peter is a master fisherman. 
If there is a PhD in fishing, will I give me Peter? But Bible says that all through the night, they could not catch one fish. So there is a point in life that everything is right. Yes, the result is not telling. There is a point in man's life that you have everything you need to have, but you cannot get the result you desire to get. Bible says they were there, and an expert called fisherman, expert fisherman, officer, could not catch a single thing, and he was there. He has the right net, the right boat. The water has not dried up. In that water, there was fish. Do you know how I know that there was fish in that water? Bible says that the spirit of the, the Lord himself came. Jesus came. They did not even know that it was the Lord. So that you will know that they've been dwelling in calamity all along. They could not know that the person that is talking to them is the person that they spent an entire three and a half years with. And he said, have you catched any fish? And he said, ah, no. We've tried since yesterday night. We've not catched anything. He said, oh, cast your net. And Bible said, the moment they cast their net, they drew out so there was fish in that water. Mm. So there is a point in time in woman's life that the proposal is actually correct. Yes, they will not give you the job. Oh, yeah. Your document is actually correct. Yet the visa will not come to you. You read truly, but the exam will not come to where you read. Truthfully, you read. You like you spend the entire day to read. When you see the exam, the exam question. <laughs> You first ask yourself. You not ask your neighbors. You want to call? I said, you Oh God. So there is a point in life when everything that guy ticked all your box. Mm. But the point is not looking as though it's the one. You don't even know. <laughs> Face good. But I want us to know something. That sometimes our next level are often beyond the scope of our preparation. There are the times that you need something beyond the natural. You need the help of the spirit. It is the time that you will know. That there is a place called the throne of mercy where you can access it from boldly as a child of God. God did not send the spirit here to come and just freelance. Sometimes I'm sure even the spirit will be like, hey, there's Lumina. I am here, use me. Because we tend to, your head has calculated so many solutions that you forget to pray. You will not start running after each solution. At the end of the day, they will come to nothing. It's not when you are now crying. Come, Shepherd, you see me. You see me. That God will not ask you. Did you ask me? Okay. The Spirit of the Lord is with you every day, every time, looking for access to get through to you. He wants to be in the decision making of your life. Listen, purpose is sweet, vision is sweet, but without the help of the Holy Spirit, it will turn bitter. Ambitions are sweet. Hallelujah. Praise that time when everything seems right and the result is not forthcoming. It's not the time to cry. It's not the time to, to start feeling as though God is no longer on the throne. Let me tell you. Either your prayer is answered or not. God is always on the throne. No? Yes. And guess what? There is always a issue that no access it. The same thing that you don't have, someone else is achieving it without this. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come to thee. There is a spirit that the Lord has given a man. There is a spirit that the Lord has supplied to women. 
That's the spirit that is enough for you. That is the spirit that is able to bring you from the lowliest of place to the top of the ladder. Stop submitting your proposal without the Holy Spirit. Stop going into your exam without the Holy Spirit. Stop doing ministry without the Holy Spirit. Stop living the affairs of your life without the Spirit of the Lord. You will think that you can do it by yourself. You will think that you actually have the wisdom enough to carry it out. When the bliss and, and, and the grace of life come at you, you will know that there is a need for help. Way more than what you think you are. Bible did not saw every animal, but decided to compare the devil with a lying lion. Either a lying lion, I be a lion. The appearance is fearful. Yeah. So you will need more than just yourself to stand. Yeah. You will need more than just yourself for that business to actually try it. Yes. Do you know how many people are doing the same thing that you are doing? No. People that are ready to spend. You don't even have money to do advertisements. Yes. Some people have already bad lecturer. You, you don't have money to buy lecturer. You cannot read. You still cannot pray. <laughs> the same money that seems as though you can never achieve is what someone is using to buy anything in club. And God is saying there is help here to be assessed. <laughs> And God is saying, my daughter, I have help. That is helpful. And you say, God, wait for us. Oh, yeah, can you Ojibwa? Let's sort it. Ojibwa, Ojibwa, Ojibwa is not sorted. Let me quickly use all my formula. It's still not going. And God is saying, you don't even need to do that. Just invite me to the affairs of your life. Bible says, come unto me. All those that, when you post that Bible verse, people think it's for unbelievers. They play. They play. Every single day, there is help for you to be assessed. The Bible says that it loves us with daily benefit. In that benefit is you going to God for help. The next proposal you are submitting, can you submit it to the Holy Spirit in life? The next admission form you want to fill, can you fill it with the Holy Spirit in mind? The next time you want to pray, can you ask God to help you to pray? You will actually think that you have the power to pray until you start praying. You will actually think you have the power to tarry in the place of prayer until you start praying. (laughs) You will actually think you have the right prayer point until you start praying. There are some times that your prayers are not enough to, to actually express how you feel. There are times that your prayers are not enough to tell God What's going on in your life? At that point in time, come on to me and I will give you rest. At that point in time, it's not the time to start moving in that theater. It's the time to sit down and worship. It's the time to tell God, I need the my beloved the most beautiful among thousands and my beloved the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes you are
because there is no spirit of the Lord in it. Ministry becomes easy when you introduce the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says that it brings to our remembrance all things. The Bible says that it guides us in all truth. That means even in truth, you need to be guided. Because the truth that you are not guided in can kill you. The spirit of the Lord. Show me a man that wants to do mighty. And I will show you a man that needs the divine help of the Lord. Show me a man that wants to try the life. And I will show you a man that needs the help of the Lord. You will think you can keep all you have until you start losing it. Yes. Finally, Jesus was on the third. Sent his angel to one woman called Mary. And Jesus said, and the angel said, There is an agenda that called is to me at the head. And God will meet the womb of the woman. A virgin woman to give birth to a son. And Mary said to the angel, how shall this be? No, not that I know not a man. How shall these desires be fulfilled? How shall this dream come to pass? Knowing not that I'm not even qualified. How will I get this job? Knowing not that my certificate is not enough. How will I get this money? Even if they said the entire me, I'm not enough. How will this child not die? Saying that there is no water, I am not enough. How is this proposal without bride? Going to make it to the top of the director's table, knowing that I am not a man. Guess the response of the angel. He says, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the on eye, the power of the eye shall overshadow thee. He said, Therefore, also, that only thing which shall be born of thee, that desire that shall be born of thee, the outcome of the Holy Spirit on you shall be called the Son of God. Hmm. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. The peace of the stillness in the atmosphere.
be at peace with all men. Amen. Look at it here in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Say, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present yourself to God and the peace of God which transcend understanding. Regard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For in Jesus mighty name we pray. The second scripture I want us to charge us up before we take the communion tonight is in the book of Psalm 16, verse 8. He said, I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With my right hand, I will not be shaken. I want to know that with the Holy Spirit, you will not be shaken. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that with the Spirit of God, you will not, you will not be shaken. He said, do not be anxious about anything. That means that before you take that business, you have to take it to God. Hallelujah. Before you, make, before you think about that situation, Always put it in prayer. Hallelujah. I want to pray tonight and say, Father Lord, as I stand in you, Lord, as you are my rock, I will not be shaken, Lord. In this month of refreshing, I will not be shaken. In my business, I will not be shaken. In my health, I will not be shaken. That all that concerns me will not be shaken. In the name of Jesus, can you pray that the system of this world will not shake me? In the name of Jesus, can we open your mouth and pray? Philippians that says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I don't know whatever thing that you have been worried about tonight. I want you to listen to this. I want you to pray about it. I say, Father Lord, I tell you to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, can you open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, I do not worry about anything, Lord. I commit myself unto you. I commit my soul unto you. I commit this commitment commit to commit 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 your hands tonight. That to take this communion now. That Lord, I'll sit inside. I'll sit eyes there. That my eyes are open in the name of Jesus. Marco Satabaria. Can you pray? For in Jesus, mighty name, we pray. I want us to know that one of the things that the Spirit of God will thank you. Can we just celebrate? Uh, can we celebrate? Uh, you know, one of the things that I that I that, that she said that I could pick from that stand for me tonight is that there are a lot of people that are doing what you are doing. That same business you are doing, that idea that God has deposited in you. You know, one thing that I've learned with the man of God is that when God gives you an idea, if you don't run with it, there's another person that is waiting. Yeah. Once that person picks it up, you not be like, ah, this is this thing that God has showed you to me. Amen. Amen. And when she was saying that, in the, you would think you can pray by yourself, Oga. Okay? There are times that when you pray three minutes, it will look like you are praying for one hour. Hallelujah. So, you know, we need to live by the, by the Spirit of God. That's why you see a man of God that said, a minimum life is shared. We live by the Spirit. Amen. We do not do this work by our own capacity. If you want to do any project and you are trying to do it by your own power, you see that you get tired. Hallelujah. It is because the Spirit of God has kept us. That's why this ministry is still alive to today. Can we just lift up our voice and say, Father, we thank you because your Spirit has kept us up to these days as a ministry, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you for Virtues UK. We thank you for Virtues Island. We thank you for Virtues Maryland. And we thank you for all the ministries that are yet to come, oh God. We thank you for the leadership. We thank you for the set man. We thank you for how you have helped him. And we lift our voice and say, Father, we thank you. God bless you. We give you praise. We celebrate you, Father. Randa Bata Satabayande. Robo Kotolibosa. For in Jesus. 
Mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I want us to stress for to the our hands in this communion tonight. That Lord, as I partake of this communion tonight, that Lord, I receive your peace, your peace and all understanding. I receive all this concept in the name of Jesus. I receive peace in my finances. I receive peace in my peace. I receive peace in my health. I receive peace in my stress. I receive peace in all that concerns. Can you open us and pray? That Lord, I receive peace. You are the raising our living. You are the one for me. You are the one for me. You are the one for me. You are the reason I live long. I want us to come forward. As we come forward, let's come on forward in faith. That we partake of this flesh and this blood tonight. That your eyes will open. Can you begin to pass? You are singing that song. I want you to be have it in your mind as you are praying now. Master Sabarosa. If you look at how God has helped us, we'll know that we cannot get to where we are by ourselves. It has been God who has helped us to get to where we are. Amen. Amen. If you look at the challenges, the situation, the, the, our day-to-day activities, we know that it's God that has helped us. Amen. Amen. I don't know many of us tonight that know that God has helped him. Can you just say, can you just say thank you, Father? Can you Hallelujah. In that same token tonight, I would like you to give your tithe tonight. One of the things that I want you to know is that I have learned from my man of God is that I said, pay your tithe so that things will not be tied for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one of the things that Bishop used to tell us, he said that that same money that you are struggling to pay, if a problem comes now and they call upon you, you will find a means to look for that money. Hallelujah. So why don't you just pay that money for you to be able to speak for you ahead? If you are giving your tithe tonight, can you just be upstanding? Hallelujah. Any tithe in the house tonight? Any title in the house? Praise God. Hallelujah. Any title? Okay. Praise God. Okay, I think I'm the only one, I'm the only title in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father, Lord, as I give up my title tonight, oh God, Lord. Let the blessings of titan be my portion in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I take this step of faith, oh God, Lord. Let my pocket never run dry in the name of Jesus. Let all that concerns me be perfected, O God. Let me enjoy your peace at all times, Lord. Amen. And let me enjoy your leading in all Amen. my life, Lord. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we package our offering quickly? Can we package our offering? If you're using the envelopes, and if you're using the account number, Is. Like I said to us, by now, every one of us should have the church account number as a beneficiary on our, on our, self, on our app. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, like Bishop said, this is your heart. God will do what? God will put it in your hands. So by now, we should have the church account as a beneficiary. 
you know, one of the things that I want you to know is that when God is a beneficiary of your, your income, that means you are also a beneficiary of his blessing. Hallelujah. Yes, so tonight, can we just... Okay, the, the account number is up on the screen. So in case you don't have it, you can make a transfer. Hallelujah. So can we just make our transfer quickly tonight? Praise God. Hallelujah. Can we raise up our offering quickly? If you are using your phone, raise up your phone. If you are using the envelope, just raise up whatever means you are using tonight. Can you just raise it up tonight? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord will bless you, Lord. We thank you because as we are able to bring this offering to your house tonight, Lord. Father, Lord, accept our offering tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray, Lord, as we have taken this step of faith to give our offering tonight, oh God, Lord. Let men give all to us back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let this seed speak for us whenever we need it to speak in the name of Amen. Jesus. And Lord, let this speak, speak of better things unto our future and our presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our venture tonight, we want to give maybe to Hebron or to any of our seats. I would like you to signify. There's an account number for that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is any one of us that wants to give to Hebron? We can just package it right now. In that same token, I therefore bring greetings from the man of God, all the way from the United Kingdom. I will celebrate. that I've learned in the culture. When we celebrate the man of God, we don't celebrate the man of God sitting down. Can we celebrate the man of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we make it out? You know, one of, one of the things that I've learned with this thing is that, you see, if you think it's easy, just start a business. Amen. You understand me? Just start a business by yourself and you'll see that it's not easy. You know, so for, for a man of God to be able to take us this far, is by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So, uh, in, in that same token, I want us to celebrate the grace of God upon this house who has kept this ministry up to this moment. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise God. So, before we go tonight, I just also want us to do something. I want us to quickly, in 60 seconds, I want us to pray. Look at that scripture that I said. I said, do not worry about anything. Say, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So in the first place, I want you to, 60 seconds, I just want to thank God. I don't know what God has done for you from the beginning of this week to today. I want you to be grateful to God and lift up your voice and say, Father, Lord, I thank you for that which you have done. I thank you, Lord. I'm not ungrateful, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I don't know whatever thing that God has done for you and whatever he has not done. I want you to thank you for that which he has done and also thank you for that which he has not done and that which he's doing with you tonight. I want you to open our mouth tonight and say, Father, we thank you. We celebrate you. We bless you with tonight. We say, Father, we bless you. We celebrate you. Oh, Lava Shatabadia, Master Libidus, Masha Maria, Masala Maria, Rubu to the Bibus, Masha Maria, Rana Bacatara de Bibus, Mandi Bibus, Rabbi Bacatara, I will pray. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In that same token, that same scripture said that do not worry about him, but he said instead pray about it. I want you to give you another 60 seconds to pray about something within now and Sunday. That Lord, I say, Father, Lord, I trust you for this thing. I want you to release your faith and pray whatever thing you have. I want to pray and say, Father Lord, I trust you. And Lord, whatever situation, whatever situation that thing that is pertaining to your heart that you want God to do for you, I want to release your faith tonight. I want to be a prophet in your life. I give you the opportunity to prophesy over your life tonight and pray over that situation. Pray, 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 pray. Can you pray? Father Lord, I pray tonight. I stand upon this altar. Masi ketele bakotoya. Riga da balamayani. Eko sabana kibu. Masha tabani kibu kusuya. Masa. 
For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The one prayer I want you to pray before you go tonight. I want to say, Father, Lord, help me, Lord, to know you more. Help me to acknowledge you at all my time, Lord. Help me to fellowship with you, Lord, throughout the many days of this week. Lord, help me to fellowship with you. Help me to be able to know you more. Help me to love you. Help me to seek you. This month of refreshing, the way you can be refreshed by you knowing God, Lord. That Lord, help me to be able to meditate on your word. Help me to be able to dwell on your word richly. In the name of Jesus, that I abide in you and you in me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, can you open your mouth and pray? That Lord, help me, Lord. Now I know you more in the name of Jesus. Marco Satava Lavayandi, Robo Potole Begosa, Rada Bagatala Bagosa, Radi Bagatande, Ekoto Begosa, Rada Bagatala Bayandi, Roda Bagabadia. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Before we go tonight, I just want us to pray, stretch our hands to our man of God as we will be rounding up his work in the, in the UK. I want you to pray and say, Father Lord, every soul he has talked to, everywhere he has gone to, that the Lord will give him the land of the United Kingdom, the name of Jesus. Can we pray that the Lord is going to strengthen him, the Lord is going to help the work in the name of Jesus, that every work that he's doing there, that the Lord is going to strengthen him, the Lord is going to encourage him with particular testimony, even though when, while he's there and when he'll be coming back, that it's going to be much more testimony in the name of Jesus, that the Lord is going to in the mighty name of Jesus, that every man, that the Lord will encourage him with more results in the name of Jesus. Masha Tavaria, La Prada Tavaria, for in Jesus, mighty name we are praying. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I thank you for tonight, Lord. I never stand in the authority of your servant, Revelation Self Alpha. I never bless all your children this night, Lord, that, Lord, whatever they lay their hands upon in the many days of this week, Lord, may you prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray may the Spirit of God visit them afresh tonight in the name of Amen. Jesus. May they experience an encounter with God that they will know that God is this God of this house. Amen. is a good to God. Amen. That, Lord, I pray, Lord, may this one, may, he, may they have come out with testimony in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I never pray over everyone here tonight. I prophesy by the grace of your servant, Reverend Lysander from Ubudu, this, month, this night, Lord. I pray over you tonight. Let the blessing of this house be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's a grace that makes sense to walk in this house. Amen. Let it be your portion in the name Amen. of Jesus. As you go out there, may men be a blessing to you. Amen. May God be a blessing to you. Amen. May you enjoy favor before God and before Amen. men. May this many days of this week be a, a week of testimony for you. Amen. For in Jesus mighty name we are praying. Amen. Amen. To take us further tonight, can we share grace and peace tonight? Grace, grace and, and peace be most high unto us, through the knowledge of God our Father, and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Can we share to the neighbor? Grace, grace and peace be most high unto you, through the knowledge of God your Father, and of Jesus Christ our Lord. In case anybody didn't say wonderfully, can you say powerfully by yourself? Grace and peace be most high unto me, to the Lord, I my Father, and of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah.